All right, hello everybody. Turn the camera on here. Uh, so, uh, welcome. This is uh, day two of our webinars. Yesterday we did a little bit on Google Classroom. Probably going to have to double that one up. Uh, there's a lot of content to be covered there that we'll probably have to revisit and stuff like this. Today we're going to do a Google Meet one. Um, not quite as much content to cover here. Essentially, we're, we're looking at a communication platform and what can we do to uh, to make the best use of that. So uh, I do have a bit of a program uh, that I want to get through some of the things that I want to talk to you about um, and stuff. Uh, but before I do, uh, I want to address one of the comments that was made in, in, the, uh, in the chat window beforehand. Yes, it appears that the meet grid view, for those of you who are using it, uh, was updated at some point today, and now long, it's no longer uh, working for some users. I still have mine, mine's still working, so obviously my extension hasn't updated, but for others, uh, it is not working. So, what does this mean? This means that, The link that I shared out before, Google Meet Grid View, uh, seems to be failing for some people. So um, it's not working. I do notice that there are other ones on there. Uh, so there's this Google Meet Grid View ICE. Um, I'm not going to comment on the validity of any, any of them. Google Meet Grid View does not uh, take any of the uh, any permissions. It doesn't record anything. It's essentially just something that's working on your computer. Um, I don't know and, and definitely be wary of any of these. This is Google Meet Grid View was done based off of a script and it's created by uh, some people out on the East Coast. Uh, they manage it, they're doing it all on their own and it is a, uh, it's not a big company that's doing it. So just be aware of that. Okay, one other one uh, that I will point out here. Um, and essentially, sorry, for those of you who weren't aware, Google Meet Grid View. I'm just pulling up my screen share again. Google Meet vi uh, Grid View um, it essentially gives you the ability to view all of your students in one place. So instead of some being in the middle, some being on the sidebar, it brings them all into one place. I don't know that I recommend this so much with our littles. Um, but yeah, sorry, maybe I do. I don't know that I recommend it where we're doing a lot of presenting of our screens because what's gonna happen in that manner is a presentation uh, screen, if people don't know how to pin it, will be very, very small. Okay, so it's something that you just need to be aware of that. I am also going to show you another one that has gained a little bit of popularity. It's called Nod. So I'll drop this in the chat window for those of you who want. So what Nod does and I'm gonna jump over to a different screen here. I just have to present from a different screen. What Nod does is it gives this little toolbar up top here um, and I think that this is definitely something that your kids are going to get need to get used to because the novelty of this uh, is going to cause some frustrations. But essentially, we get a couple of people tap in here to get in. Essentially, when you click on that, it's going to pop up in the left hand side a little uh, reaction to what's happening in there. If someone says thumbs up, good job, something like that, it'll show their name and then it'll put that up there. It also lets students to click this button, which allows them to raise their hand. And that will stay there until we clear that off. But I do believe that anybody with the Nod um, extension 
can jump in and clear that off. So if someone out there has that knot extension, you should be able to go in there, I think, and clear that off. I haven't played with them with this one that much. Um, I know that I can go in and clear them off, but I'm not sure if others can as well. So go ahead then, Yasin, and clear that one off uh, for me just to show that it's not lying. So essentially kids could raise their hands and another kid could clear it off. So we do need to teach a little bit about the digital citizenship and stuff like that. Uh, there's some extensions, sorry, there is some options that go along with it um, with regards to notifications and everything like that. So that's up in there. I'm not really going to cover that one that much uh, at this point right now, but if you do want to connect on that later, definitely let me know. I don't mind uh, jumping in and, uh, and helping you out with that. So just need to grab my slides here. All right, so essentially where we're at is Google Meet is our platform. This is the one video conferencing platform that Palliser is recommending you use. And I, I will say this really quickly up front and then hopefully I won't need to comment on it again. The reason we do this is because our technicians spend a lot of time on the back end trying to establish the safest and securest um, environment for our students and our staff. OK, so we're working in the back end to make sure that stuff is working properly and we have the ability on the back end to deal with some of our bad, ha bad apples, right? The, the people that are out there doing some bad things. It's not necessarily that we can do that instantaneous, but we definitely can deal with that when we're aware of it and we can try and address these situations. The same cannot be said for Zoom or some of the other platforms. So regardless of what you're reading in the news around Zoom and uh, some of the pieces out there, um, and I, I'm not gonna get into the weeds on those ones. I will say that this is a platform that we're recommending you use. We know that there are some pieces in here, for example, mute all, uh, that maybe you, you're used to seeing in another platform that we don't have in Meet, um, but it is a platform that we're recommending. So we'll, we'll stop there. We'll leave that one alone and we will uh, we'll move on. So, um, so two things really quickly, uh, right off the bat is how do we set up a Meet? There's a couple different ways that you can set up a meet. We'll start with the first one, which is the way most of you guys got in, which is through the calendar. So if we jump to our calendar, and I know we're not necessarily used to in some cases, and our students might not be used to using calendar, but what we can do is create a meet in here. Just like any other one, we have the ability to set an event and a time for that event and set repeating um, or, or like repetitions of that event. So if we want it to repeat every weekday from 3.30 till 4 with our classroom, we can set that and make it go uh, and then, you know, eventually end that off at the end of the year. Down below here, you'll see just below the location, there's the ability to add conferencing. So Google Meets now allows us to add up to 250 people. Uh, we have uh, Google has upgraded everybody to their enterprise version, which is 250. Normally it's 100, which I think would still fit all of our needs. The other thing that Google Meets uh, or Google has done with Meets is they've allowed us to live stream it. So this is also a enterprise um, piece. It is supposed to be moving down into the standard education um, offerings. So live streaming may not go away. We can have up to, I believe it's 100,000 people from our domain. So we don't have 100,000 users within Palliser, but we can have up to 100,000 people within our domain. We cannot live stream from outside of our domain. So once we add the Hangouts Meet into here, there's a little option for the dropdown. Now, right here, meeting ID. This Jason, is a link. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me jump back here and make sure I'm presenting. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Here we go. I jumped off before I started presenting. Thank you, Nesma. That's better. Perfect. Brilliant. Sorry, guys. So we're into our calendar. I've created my event. I've set my repeating times on here. Um, I have my Google Meet, sorry, I should show that again. Add conferencing is right here below the location. And it gives us our conference in here. 
We have our meeting link right here. If you want, you can edit the last 10 digit, the, the kind of entrance code into there if there is a need to ent ex to edit that. Now, I'm gonna show you another reason we might wanna do that later on, but for the time being, we're gonna leave this the way it is, all right? We're exploring this option right here. So right now, a meet adds a phone number, and we have this set to be turned on. The problem is, is I believe it's a New York area code. So you can call in from your phone to this number, but because it's a New York area code, it may, well, the majority of the time, it's probably going to entail uh, long distance charges for our users. So we're also looking at, does it make sense for us to leave that on or turn that off? So we're exploring that. Uh, you should, if something happens, you're going to see it in the next few days here on what's going to go on there. Um, down at the bottom, we have our live stream. So that's what I turned on with this meet. And if you turn on live stream, essentially you're giving a link that you can share with people. You can post on a website, you can do whatever you want. And there is no interaction between uh, the people that are a part of this. You guys were invited as guests and the people that are watching on live stream. And we do have some people on live stream today. So um, essentially this is just a viewing platform for gaining information. So maybe there is something in there that you wanna use. That's method number one. So that's the first way that you can create that Google Meet. The second way that we can create the Google Meet is to go to meet.google.com or go into the waffle and find Google Meet and open up that window, okay? If you create a Meet in this manner, there's a little bit more functionality from a teaching point of view that you get. So by doing this, we can create a shortened code. So if the name of my class is Quasni Math and it's third period, I can use Quasni Math 3, okay? I've given this meet a nickname. Now, the reason I wanna do that is because this meet is not active. The code Quasni Math 3 is not active until I enter that meet. So my students cannot go in and get into Quasni Math 3 before I'm there. Also, if I am the last person to leave, so if I make sure that everybody is kicked out before I close the meet, the students are not able to get back into that meet. So one of the questions that I've had a lot here is how do I keep my students out of the meet after the class is over? This is a way that you can do this. Instead of scheduling it, if you create it with a nickname, they can get in but they can't, and, and then when they leave, they can't get back in if you are not in that meet. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute for that meet code to no longer be active. But once that occurs, Quasni Math 3 would no longer be uh, used. That being said, if I use that code again tomorrow during period three, that code will still be active and, uh, and I'll be able to use it. So I can do that. I can use that code again to restart the meet but the kids can't get in there until I start it. So maybe a way to, and I was working with a teacher yesterday from Calgary Christian Elementary, and she was saying that that's the way she was gonna do it was to give her kids a code and then tell them, okay, five minutes before 11 o'clock, I want you guys logging in. She would make sure that she was there a little bit in advance. And, uh, and then when they got there, it would be there. She could then close that code down to them and, uh, or sorry, close the meet afterwards and it would all be done. So, so I'm just gonna stop really quickly here and take a look at if there are any questions coming in from the chat menu. I don't see any. Does anybody have a question about starting a meet or getting it set up? All right, one of the advantages of using uh, the calendar I will show you my calendar event from yesterday. So if we go back to my calendar event from yesterday, this was the, uh, we'll just jump in here and edit. This was the one I did on Google Classroom. What happens is automatically when you create and schedule this, if you record that meeting, the recording
I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Hopefully this won't be the running thing here. If you record the meeting, the recording of the meet and a transcript of the chat window, all go into and get connected to that calendar event. So when this is all done today, if you guys go back in, in about five minutes or so, you'll be able to reconnect with the recording of the meeting and a transcript from the, the chat window from the point the recording was hit and and on to when the recording was stopped it doesn't continue all the way through so so that's one of the advantages of uh scheduling it otherwise it goes into a drive a folder in your drive called meet recordings and inside Meet Recordings, you will see any of the files that you've recorded. They will be added into there automatically. Now, I've moved mine out into another place, but this is where they go. So you can then, because they're files in your uh, Google Drive, you can share those out with anybody you want and uh, in the same manner. So. Does the code work with a classroom as a post to click and connect or do I need the link it provides? Okay, so one of the things is if students take a look at your address bar and up in the address bar, there is a 10 digit code uh, that's created there as well. That's not the nickname that we used when we created the code using, using meet.google.com. This one here saying Quasni Math 3 that is the nickname. This one here is the actual access code. So if students go up here and they find that actual access code, they can still get into it after. We're looking at some settings uh, on our end and adjusting those. And I would be interested to, uh, to hear what you guys think about it. Um, but do students need to create meets or do they just need to participate in meets? So that's one of the discussions we're having on our end because if we turn off certain pieces, uh, even if they grab this, they wouldn't be able to get back into it, but uh, it will not work. Sorry, so long story short, Nick, it will not work if you just put that in there. This is the link that you need to add, but then by giving them this link, it's giving them the 10 digit code that they can get in at any time. It also does that when you do a classroom and it emails you. Mm. Sorry, Sherry, does uh, what? Gives you a pop-up, gives you a link. I'll, I'll come back to that, Sherry. So um, one of the things, and this is this is new. I don't know if you guys read that, the three from the tech team yesterday, but this one was just came out yesterday. Is, let me bring this in. In Classroom, they're looking at adding a static meet into Classroom. So this was, obviously, this is not one of my classrooms, um, but it would go in just beside under the uh, classwork page, just to the left of the calendar link, they're going to put in a meet button. And that will be a meet that is restricted to the teachers and the students that are a part of that classroom. So teachers, co-teachers, and students that are part of that classroom will be the only ones that can get into that link and into that meet. Um, so we don't have to worry about anybody from the outside, anybody externally. Um, I haven't seen it on mine yet. It hasn't become available. I've heard about two weeks, some of the people we were talking to, but I am not entirely sure uh, where that is. So hopefully that comes around soon. So. All right, perfect. No, no need to apologize, Sherry. I'm the one who's, uh, who's butchering this session. So don't worry about it. Um, cool. So we've got everybody in there. We've got it scheduled. Who can join your meet? I am going to continue presenting, but I'm going to try and join from an external uh, session here. Um, what I mean is I'm going to join from my personal Gmail address. Now, anybody within Palliser right now can get into the meet. If they have the link to the meet or if they know the access code or the name of the link, they can get into it. 
But if somebody external is trying to come in, so they know that 10 digit code that was up top there and they have not been invited. So they're not added to the guest invite. What should happen? And you should see this. It's gonna give you the little pop-up, the little doorbell that says, do we wanna let Jason in or do we not wanna let Jason in? So I'm gonna deny Jason entry. Guy's a shady character. And, uh, but we are limiting ourselves to only people within that palace or email address. So that's one little level of security that you have in there. Also, if we do get somebody into our link, so we see all of these people down here. If we do have somebody in our link, and Ambreen, I won't kick you out, don't worry, but I'm gonna use you because you're at the top of the list here. You have the ability to remove them at any time. So if you accidentally allow somebody entry into your meet that you don't actually want in there, you can send them on their way. You can click this. You can also mute them. The problem is, is if they are Palliser individuals, if they have a Palliser email address, they can get back in. All right. So that became an issue a couple of days ago uh, with some kids. Um, I think that we addressed it from our end and I haven't heard anything else and I'm sure I will. If, if it didn't go on, but uh, you can kick out people in this manner right here. So you can remove them from there. So, all right, jump back into the chat window really quick here. Can students record the session from their end without buying permission if they click the record button? So if you are the organizer of the meet, if you have set the meet up, uh, sorry, I forgot to check who asked that question. Lydia, Lydia, if you set the meet up and you record it, or anybody records it, the recording of that session goes into your My Drive. It is not, it doesn't go to them uh, and it's not into their drive. There is nothing, that being said, there's nothing stopping them from using a screen recorder to record it or from using their cell phone and just holding it up and recording it. But with using the recording um, option down in the bottom, anybody who starts that recording and anybody can, it gives a notification. So you see up in the top left-hand side, we are live streaming this and also we are recording this. So that indication will be there, but the recording will always go into your drive. So it will not be shared with anybody else unless you share it. So, or you've scheduled it with a calendar event, in which case it's gonna go into the calendar. You also receive an email with the recording to tell you that that recording has been done and it's available in the calendar. So if you didn't do the recording and you weren't aware of that, you can jump back and stop sharing on that file. So. That was actually the next topic here. So, um, so really quickly, because we're going through, I'm gonna pop down on this bottom bar. This bottom bar is super useful. Sometimes we don't play with it as much. I, re I scheduled this through a calendar event and what you'll see inside the calendar event is I also attached in that calendar event two documents. So you guys can jump there at any time and see the Google Meet Quick Start Guide and the do's and don'ts of video conferencing that we shared out the other day. So if you attach um, documents into that calendar event, they also get shared out and are available to the link. So if you have a schedule that you want to do, I recommend possibly a Google Doc that people can use as kind of a back channel to leave notes or take notes and sort of that collaborative approach to it that can all be done through attachments in here. Then you don't have to share them out. You can also share them out through the chat window. The only problem with that is the chat window starts when you join the meet and continues forward. So if, you, if I posted something at the very beginning, like, and before anybody was into this meet, actually, Ambreen was here first and I was second. If I had posted something, only she and I would have seen that. Anybody who came after, can't rewind to that point in the chat window. So just so you're aware. Um, obviously mute. This one's gonna hang us up and kick us out. You can also just close the tab. And this one is going to uh, mute and unmute our camera. Closed captioning um, is something that you may wanna consider looking at. Closed captioning will recognize different voices and it will, because we're all signed in with our palace or names and we all have a, a name associated with us, if we jumped in and started talking, you'll see when I'm talking, 
or when somebody else is talking. So if I turn this on, it just makes that screen a little bit smaller. It's gonna take a little bit to run it up. It's fairly good. It's not 100%. It does okay. But sometimes if you really get going or if you're using some really specific words, uh, it's gonna miss some stuff. And sometimes it jumps in big, um, you know, big spans, big sketches of, of things. So uh, if somebody else, Nesma, I see you're on my screen. If you unmute and start to talk, hopefully you're there. And so I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm still here. So hopefully you guys saw that now it jumped over and it showed that Nesma was talking and now it's back to me talking. So you can identify the different people that are talking within there. So if you want to throw something else in there, Nesma. Um, I saw that with the, that now you have asthma. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it was making up some words at the at the beginning there. And if you talk really quick, then it can't really catch up and it starts making up stuff and just throws it on there. Yeah. And it's not going to be perfect. So I've, you know, just like read and write for Google, where I people ask me, you know, how clear does a student need to talk? The clearer that you can speak, the better it's going to work. So if you go really quick, it's going to miss some words. If you go slow, Sometimes it works better, but if you mumble, and if you're not clear when you're young, like that, then <laughs> it's it's all better off, right? So you need yeah. to make sure that you're enunciating and clear. Thank you, Nesma. Yeah. Cool. So there's our closed captioning right there. To present your screen is the next button over. Right now I am presenting. One of the things to be aware of is anybody can hijack that presentation. So right now, our students and our staff can all present. If a student jumps in and wants to present over top of that, they can also do that. So it's one of the things that we need to work with them on, on good presentation skills and stuff like that. And just to be aware, stop presenting, obviously, is in the middle here. Um, and we can hit that. Now, if you notice, as I arrow over some of our people on the side, I get two options. Being the organizer, I can mute people. I cannot unmute anybody though. So that's a privacy concern and that's on purpose, but I can mute people. I can only mute one at a time. I can't mute everybody all at once. I also has, have the ability to pin. If I pin, that person will become the main person on my screen. It doesn't matter if anybody else is talking. And usually if we had our microphones on, it would jump back and forth to the people that are talking. Or if I'm presenting, that presentation would be on there. If I pin somebody on there, they will be the primary person on my screen. And then we can unpin to move to the next one. Down in the bottom right-hand corner is more options. This is where you're gonna find the ability to stream and you're recording. I don't necessarily play with my layout. The automatic works fairly well here, but I do wanna show you this switch cameras. If you have a document camera connected before you start the meet, and I'm gonna stop presenting my screen now, so hopefully you see my face again. But if you have a document camera before you start the meet, you can actually use that document camera and jump to it while you're going on. So if you want to then show showcase something, and I'm thinking, and sorry, yeah, sorry, non-math science people, but I'm thinking math science, we like to work with pens and, and paper and stuff like that. And working on a screen, even if it is a touch screen, is sometimes not the best of uses. Um, we like to get down and, and write on paper and do graphs and stuff like that. This is a great way that you can demonstrate to this and show your kids down here uh, what's going on and still be in that visual, uh, visual piece there. So, All right, I'm going to go back to the presentation now. One more thing, and I know we're right on three o'clock here, so I hope that uh, I hope there was some some functions here. Um, I will say as we're going through, I primarily, if I'm using this with uh, some of the the presentations that we're doing here, I use my meet as my background screen. So essentially, I get this running so that the the audio can come through, and if we do need to do a screen share, we're going on with that. Um, preferably having the student screen share with me so that they can demonstrate to me their learning on the screen and stuff like that. And they can think out loud with what's happening um, in a presentation scenario like this, obviously, you know, as a teacher, you're going to be presenting and stuff like that. But maybe then you're presenting your screen and you're jumping onto Jamboard or you're jumping onto a Google slide presentation or something like that. And you're not just hanging out 
on this, you know, talking head type scenario. The last one option in here to take a look at, and then we'll open this up once more for questions, is the settings. The settings allow you to set your microphone and speakers. Okay, so if you're having issues, this is a place that you want to pop in and take a look. It also allows for the video for you to choose what your default camera is. If you're if you connect a document camera after the fact, you can switch from inside of here. So that switch camera might not be there, but you can switch inside of here. You can also set your resolution. So if you have a student that's maybe at home running two or three different uh, video conferences because they have brothers and sisters or something like that, maybe for them, their receive resolution, they only want to hear audio. Or maybe they want to make sure that it's standard definition video and they're not showing video on the other side. So we're, we're lowering kind of the cost on their bandwidth for this. And then we'd also want to take a look at what is their maximum um, send resolution. So I'm going to jump up to, it auto adjusts, but I'm going to jump up to 720p, which is the highest resolution that we're going to be going on this. And maybe it looks a little better or maybe you see me and it doesn't look so good. So last thing here before we answer the questions, if you are the last one to leave the meet, like I said, it closes that meet as long as you've scheduled it in the proper way. If you are not the last one to leave the meet, make sure you stop your recording before you leave. Okay, if you leave, if I left right now, that recording I believe is still gonna be running. So just make sure that you pop over and stop that recording. So, um, Are there any document cameras teachers can borrow? Well, that's a great question, Nesma. Um, teachers who have, who have upgraded their displays to an interactive display, I will show you, Lydia, how to stop recording. Yep. Um, teachers who have upgraded to an interactive display and a Chrome box. Hopefully I've been able to uh, talk to you and address those concerns that you have. But if I haven't, just reach out to me and, and we'll get you one that can be a little bit more permanent. We are bringing in some more. Uh, we're going to have some more document cameras coming in. But then I also have some of the uh, IPVO uh, PTB. Uh, they're a smaller document camera. They work really well, especially if there's good light. Um, and those I have been collecting for student projects and stuff like that. If uh, if you want to borrow one, let me know. We need to figure out how we're going to get them up there and stuff like that, how to get them up to Calgary or how to get them out to the school. But if you need one, we're getting that to you now. They are USB, so they plug into your uh, Chromebook if you're using a Chromebook, and uh, they work brilliantly. Uh, this entire session has been done off a of Chromebook. I do all my work off of Chromebooks here. so. This entire session has been done with that. How do you stop recording? So what I will do now is I will stop recording so that we can, uh, you guys can ask any questions that you may have. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. I went a little long, maybe half an hour isn't enough time, but um, if we click on the three dots, I'll present one more time here, Lydia, so that we can make sure that we see it. I'll click on the three dots. Actually, but before I do that, one question just came in really quick. Sherry asked, is there a way to see what the students are seeing? So you can see, and remember we talked about pinning the view. So up here in the top corner is my camera. Uh, the one right beside it is what I'm presenting. So you can actually pin that view. So if I wanted to pin myself, I could pin myself there and make sure that uh, I'm seeing exactly what they're seeing. So one of the things to note here is when I'm seeing them, and I'm gonna hold up, it looks like it's backwards. On my end, it looks like it's backwards to me, but if you're seeing my image, it should look like it's proper. So it's just so that when I hold up my right hand, it's on the right hand of the screen and I'm not seeing it over here and getting all my head all going crazy, right? So it's just, it's a mirror view, so it makes it easy for me. You can also pin the presentation if you wanna see what's going on there. I'm going to unpin that because we just went down to infinity there, but that's how you would see what the kids are seeing. So how do we stop it? Down here, we're going to click the more options and I'm going to say goodbye. You don't have to leave, but just for those who are watching, we're going to stop this recording.